right, so a big box of plants came in the mail today. What did I get? Well, let's find out. All right, so first of all, hopefully all the plants are alive because this was delayed for about two days, which shouldn't really make that big of a difference. And the weather hasn't really been warm. So that's a, you know, probably good thing that it reduced the chance of any of these dying, but you never know. Uh, but all right, this looks pretty good from what I can see so far. I wonder if I can cut this box down the side. This would probably be a good thumbnail, like something in here, maybe. I don't know. Let's see if I can pause the camera, maybe figure something out. All right, so first up, we have a Pinus resinosa, also known as the American Red Pine. And this is a cultivar called Thundercloud, so... Hopefully it'll stay smaller, more compact. The foliage looks a little bit long, uh, but we'll see once we grow this out, I think into a larger sized tree, it's gonna go into the ground to help thicken up that trunk. And then maybe we can make the foliage a little bit more compact and dwarf-like. But overall, I think this is a pretty good choice. The graft scar, I mean, it's extremely obvious and kind of interesting. I think once this trunk thickens up in the ground, um, we get a little bit more taper on that. It can be turned into like an interesting feature and somehow incorporated into the design of this tree, maybe carve some deadwood. So overall, I'm not too disappointed with that grafting scar. I think it looks, you know, somewhat decent. Next up, we have a Japanese white pine. This is Pinus parviflora, Regenhold broom or Ron's broom and it stays you know very small you can see the foliage compared to this pinus resinosa uh, is extremely dwarf and compact so the only question with this is does it have a good decent branch structure um i don't know i probably wouldn't have picked it because there doesn't seem to be anything too spectacular about it Although I think we can probably cut, you know, maybe one of those branches off, flatten some of these out and get, you know, kind of a decent looking tree out of it. All right, so this one is one I was excited to see, although, you know, some people might not be excited to see it because this is a Pinus strobus cloud nine. It's an eastern white pine, which are notorious for being terrible for uh, styling as bonsai trees or at least a lot of people don't like them because they have very long uh, elongated growth but this one is supposed to be more compact and i think there's already kind of a kind of a style going here so hopefully we can style something out of this one it's got a cone forming on it already which is a nice feature so what we're gonna do is just grow it out maybe flatten some of these branches out and then see what we can turn this into I may put this in a rock planting and see if we can do some whole, you know, native landscape type of design, uh, root over rock type of project. So I'm excited. But that one is actually looking pretty decent. So the last one is in this gigantic pot. And I don't remember ordering a gigantic pot, although I guess this might be... Maybe I did, I don't know. It's what, like a three gallon size? So I guess I ordered a three gallon size and a bunch of one gallon sizes. This may be the only one that was available. And let's see, I forgot already what this one is. Um, it's gonna be a white pine, another Japanese white pine. I've been really obsessed with these lately. I have a number in my yard that I probably haven't made a video on yet. So this is Pinus parviflora billy. And man, that is very compact, but obviously it had three pots around it. So these are gonna flatten out a little bit more. I can't say a whole lot to the structure of the tree, uh, just cause it's so dense and hard to see anything, but you know, I can tell the branch whorls, or maybe I actually, I can't tell anything about them right now. I'm gonna try and flatten this out a little bit, maybe wait, but you know, overall healthy plant looking good. It's just gonna be a matter of how we can style it. But once again, really nice dwarf foliage on this white pine. 
And overall, you know, really, really great order. I mean, probably the best it could be because, you know, I can't pick out the trees myself. I can't call anybody at the nursery and say, hey, you know what, do a live stream of like 500 trees. I'm gonna pick out the best ones that I want and, you know, zoom in there to make sure you show me all the branch structures. So uh, Conifer Kingdom, they're in what, Oregon, I think? Yeah, they're out west in Oregon, so you can order this and a whole lot of other conifers, different uh, cultivars with, you know, larger foliage, smaller foliage, Dawn Redwoods, Pines, Spruce, Juniper, all sorts of stuff, so I recommend you check them out. Uh, but that was my order for today. Maybe I'll do kind of a final shot of it. All right, so here we have the four trees together. I think it's interesting how both of these kind of look similar where they're slanting off to the side and have that grafting scar, you know, but overall pretty nice order. I think we can figure out something stylistically with all of these trees. I think these two might be a little bit easier than the white pines, which, I mean, it sounds crazy because the Japanese white pine, I think of it as something that's just, you know, easily turned into a uh, bonsai with that shorter foliage um, but I think this one might be easier than the other one you know obviously I want to thicken that trunk but I think we can take off one of these branches and then flatten out some of these foliage pads and turn it into something uh, that's looking pretty good and then likewise with this one I think as long as we let some of these lower branches grow out and start flattening those out into pads uh, we can form kind of a nice shape, maybe slanting or, you know, turning and twisting back up around. Uh, the straight trunk is kind of the worst feature on this one. It's almost kind of why I like these weird, hideous grafting scars, um, because I think eventually with dead wood and just thickening the trunk, that'll make an interesting looking design. Uh, but with a straight telephone pole, I think it's a little bit harder. Uh, even something like this, since it's so low to the ground, if we thicken the trunk, I mean, we can have kind of like a twin trunk eventually. Uh, but I think we'll still figure something out with this, maybe like a literati, or maybe just have a, you know, formal upright white pine. I don't know. We'll just have to kind of see uh, what grows out of it. I mean, I guess here's another option to kind of just have this really, really long branch growing out. Um, I don't know what that style is called, but there is one where there's like a really, really long first branch and then the rest of the tree. Um, so maybe that'll help thicken the trunk. Plus we end up with a pretty unique style here. So overall, I'm pretty satisfied with this order. Um, I think it's, you know, for what it is, I think it's the best it could be. You know, somebody just picking out random trees for you and they don't know you're going to be turning them into bonsai. But I think all the material here is really, really nice. So once again, Pinus strobus, cloud nine, Pinus resinosa, thunder cloud, Pinus parviflora, Ron's broom, and then a Pinus parviflora, Billy. So those are my trees, I'm sure, when I, you know, get a chance to, I'll be ordering more. But for right now, I'm going to put all of these into the ground to develop them a little bit more. This is also one that's going to be going into the ground so we can thicken the trunk and develop it a little bit. <laughs> what the fuck?